Oh, it's good, Mrs. Nelson. What's up, guys? Oh, guys, I love this movie. Oh, what's this? Get up, Alex. Hey, this is a calculus project. Yeah, isn't that a... Isn't that due sometime soon? Here, I'll check. Due tomorrow? Eh! Due tomorrow? <laughs> due tomorrow? Whoa! <laughs> Alright guys, what are we gonna do for this? Ah. <laughs> Said ideas, huh? Well, how about this? Doctor, I need you to look at this heart for me. Oh boy, that does look quite big. Doctor Del Fuego, you better call him up. It's a big heart, but is it too big? Doctor Nussbaum, you don't mean who I think you mean. Yeah, I think we're gonna need him on this one. I'm on my way. Whoa, glad you can make it. Hmm. So what's the problem exactly? We think it might be an enlarged heart. We're not sure. We had to call you in on it. Mm. Do you have uh, any data of any sort? All right, as you can see, we've collected this data from several different scans of the heart to try to find its dimensions. We need you to help us try to figure it out. Mm. Well, what it seems to me is a pretty easy solution, actually. We're gonna solve this using calculus. Because of the data that Dr. Nussbaum and Dr. Del Fuego collected regarding the areas of certain slices of the heart at different depths, we can apply Riemann sums to find the total volume of this heart. Riemann sums are a method of estimating the definite integral of a graph. Um, they are very similar to the trapezoidal rule, only that they use the area of rectangles rather than trapezoids uh, to use its estimation. We begin, of course, by writing the definite integral of lower limit 0, upper limit 5 of f of x in respect to the change of x. For Riemann sums, we cannot say that it is equal to because Riemann sums are used only as an estimation, so we must use the approximation symbol. When using Riemann sums, you must find the width of the rectangles you are measuring. In our case, it is 1 half because the data of the heart came in increments 1 half. You multiply the width of the rectangles by the sum of all the heights of the sample rectangles. So f of 0 0.5, f of 1, f of 1.5, and so on and so on until you reach 5. For this problem, we decided to use right Riemann sums, although we can also use left and midpoint Riemann sums. 
Just to be sure you understand the concept of Riemann sums, we went ahead and plugged in the values for f of 0 0.5, f of 1, f of 1.5, and so on and so on. Again, f of x of d of x is approximately equal to this, that's very important, to 1 half the width of the rectangles times the values of the outputs. After plugging these values into our calculator, we found that the total volume of this particular heart was 43.735 centimeters cubed. This volume is actually a typical size for the average male adult heart. Luckily for Dr. Nussbaum and his lovely assistant Dr. Del Fuego, his patient, he should be absolutely fine of any heart conditions related to heart size. Well, Wolf, it's been a pleasure as always. Dude, that was awful. What do you mean? What do I mean? You did not make any sense at all. You skipped about three scenes. What is the wolf? Well, it comes out of nowhere. That doesn't make any sense. It's well, stupid. Let's come up with another idea. Wasn't well, What did you guys? Do you have anything better? Actually, I do. Yeah. What is it? All right, class. We're gonna do some derivative problems today. Now, the first one we're gonna start out with is a is a chain rule. As as you guys know, to take a derivative of a chain, you take the derivative of the outside function first, and then multiply it by the derivative of the inside function. So our first problem is as follows. Y equals inverse tangent of x squared all over the cosine of 3x. Now, can we have any volunteers? Oh, Spencer, I see your hands up. Deal with it. I remember my first math problem. You can't even read. You can't even add. Hey, Spencer, I saw your mom with the Y last night. Spencer, what are you doing? No headphones. No electronics in my class. Sorry, cuz. The equation is y equals the inverse tangent of x squared all over cosine of 3x. I believe this can be solved using the quotient rule. I remember the old calculus wizard Mr. Zazu saying that the quotient rule is y prime equals u prime v minus uv prime all over v squared. So I take the derivative of the inverse tangent of x squared, which in fact is 1 over 1 plus x squared, squared, I multiply that by the lower function, which would be cosine 3x. From this, I subtract the product of the top function and the derivative of the lower function. So the inverse tangent of x squared times negative sine 3x times 3. All of this I put over the lower function squared, so cosine squared 3x. Now all that's left is to simplify. See if you know you can get this one. Alrighty. I got another problem for you. H of x equals the definite integral, the lower limit of zero, upper limit, 3x minus 5 of the function 1 plus t squared. I'll raise to the one half power, of course, dt. Good luck. Hmm, what a mouthful. Well, to solve this, I simply evaluate the integrand at the upper limit and multiply this by the derivative of the said upper limit. All that's left is to simplify. Impressive. Let's see if you can uh, get one more. Uh, 
Alrighty. It's just a simple chain rule problem. Y equals x squared plus x plus 4. All raised to the 12th. Well, bless my bloomers. This is just a chain rule problem. First, I take the derivative of the outside function, the 12th power, and get 12 times the quantity x squared plus x plus 4 raised to the 11th power. From this, I multiply the derivative of the inside function, 2x plus 1. The final answer is then 12 times the quantity, 2x plus 1, n quantity, times the quantity, x squared plus x plus 4 raised to the 11th power. Well, I proved them wrong. I guess I'm guilty, shackle me up. Guilty of being the man. <laughs> I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man. Yes I am, yes I am, yes I am. I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man. I believe every lie that I ever told. Paid for every heart that I ever stole. You guys like that? I thought it was a good idea. Are you kidding me? First of all, what was with that swag walk? No one's going to think you're the man when you're walking with a limp or whatever that <laughs> was. And then, you got anything? Mm-hmm. Like, Spencer, dude, you think the whole class is going to, like, clap for you? Exactly. And why'd you have me switch voices halfway through? What was that about? Dude, you can't just copy a commercial, a Kevin Carnett commercial, and expect it to work. Well, teach their own. Hey, 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 let's not throw aside this whole commercial idea. I kind of like that. I mean, what about this? I've had my ups and downs, my fair share of empty roads and heavy winds. That's what made me what I am today. Now I stand here before you. What you see is a body crafted to perfection. A pair of lungs engineered to defy the laws of physics. And a mindset to master the most epic of balloons. Well, I know what you are all thinking. How fast? Is the radius of my balloon increasing when the radius is six centimeters? If I told you that I was constantly blowing air into my balloon at a rate of four centimeters cubed per second, would that help? Anyway, here are your choices. A. Four pi over seven centimeters per second. B. Three pi over 36 centimeters per second. C, one over 36 pi centimeters per second. Or D, the balloon is not increasing. Don't worry, I'll give you time. Okay, who needs a little help? Step one, draw and label. Step two, find the relationship. Step 3. Find derivative with respect to time. Step 4. Find unknowns. And step 5. Solve. Okay, so first you're going to draw a sphere that represents the volume of the balloon, and you're going to label the radius r. Next, you're going to find the equation. We know that volume equals 4 thirds times pi r cubed for spheres. Then you're, then you're going to take the derivative of the equation that you found. So dv dt equals 4 thirds times pi times 3r squared times dr dt. Next, you're going to find out what you know and don't know. We know that the volume at which the volume is increasing is 4 centimeters cubed per second, and we know that the radius equals 6 centimeters but we don't know the rate at which the radius is increasing. Finally, you plug in your values for the variables, do a little bit of simplifying, 
and you find that 1 over 36 pi is your answer. So C, 1 over 36 pi centimeters per second is the answer. Miles, that was probably the dumbest idea I've ever heard. I... N no words. I don't even know what to say. That was so bad. I thought it was kind of good. It wasn't. It wasn't. Okay. Well, guys, uh, I don't really know what to do now. Anyone else have an idea? No. I don't have an idea. I have an idea. Let's go to Taco Bell. <laughs>